know, I wanted to just like this is very very cool for me because Farscape was my my father actually is a huge 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 Farscape fan. Like I grew up in a, a sci fi household, and this was one of the shows as a kid. I really got to watch a lot. <laughs> um. So I kind of wanted to start with just like looking back to Farscape, looking at you know it's been twenty years since the show, over twenty years since the show began, like it's been twenty years since the show ended originally. Uh, there's been so many attempts to get it back. There's been so much outpouring of fan support of just we've seen the comics, we've seen the continuations in various forms. Looking back at the last twenty years of, Sp of Farscape, what would you say has surprised you most about this series um, about the impact? It's well, obviously, I, like you, you create any TV show, and I've done a bunch of five of them or something, and, and you know, and and you never know kind of what what sort of reaction it's going to get, what sort of you know, um, you, you're so in the in the in the thick of making the show, um, and just sort of make it the best you can, um, that you you know you, you can't really think of any sort of sense of longevity, um, and uh, and and then there's so many intangibles that go into uh, the success of a show. That is, um, uh, you know, that, that you have no control over, um, and Farsi just became one of those one of those shows where, uh, you know, it was it was a, a confluence of all these incredible uh, factors that I think made it in made it the show that it is. Um, some of it's the storytelling, obviously. I'm very proud of the you know with the work that the, my writers and I have done did on this show, um, but it's the cast. Um, starting with Ben Browder at the top of the, you know, who was like just the boldest actor, you know, was willing to kind of do absolutely anything, embraced that, you know, wantonness of, of the of the storytelling. Um, and then shooting in Australia was incredibly important and having access to that, just the the, the Australian sensibility um, was something that I, I contend to this day was a huge contributing factor. And then the fact that um, we... Um, uh, we didn't have any like you know network interference. Uh, the studio was the Henson Company, Brian Henson, and Brian was as, is as nutty as the rest of us, and as as you know as anxious to have things that are unconventional and and just you know surprise surprising to the audience uh, as any. So the studio was like uh, you know contributing to the in the person of Brian contributing to the to the to the, the that aesthetic, and then um, Sci Fi Channel here in the states at least you know was. Um, was again, they, you know, they were luckily it was a, um, an, a, 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 a network, if you will, um, that was um, uh, dedicated to genre, right? So we were, you know, we weren't trying to be on a, on something that was kind of where, where you're not quite in a procedural, regular procedural show where you're trying to kind of, you know, you need to, we need to marry that, marry more to that. So uh, having said all that, the idea that, Again, you have no idea that anything's going to have any sort of, um, you know, a longevity at all. Um, let alone here we are, twenty five years later, and I'm chatting with you about, you know, about a show that that um, seems to be continuing to gather new fans all the time, which is great. We're on um, Shout TV right now, you know, right now, which is great. So people have an opportunity to see it. There's on March nineteenth. There's going to be a a, um, a marathon celebrating the the twenty fifth anniversary. There's a DVD, 25th anniversary DVD set with all sorts of new, new you know, background material and, and bonus stuff and whatever. So, you know, here we are 25 years later, and there's really kind of a, a fun, uh, you know, and, and, and very gratifying kind of, you know, um, chance to re reintroduce it to uh, um, to new fans. And then for, you know, uh, fans who may not have seen it for a while to kind of find it again. I also love that that like touched on a bunch of the stuff I wanted to ask you about. So that was my job. Oh, that's it. Okay. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got uh, <laughs> now, one, one of the things. Like I love that you brought up of just the way that it's it's connecting with modern audiences because I feel like, and I know I'm not the only person who said this, but Farscape does feel, especially looking back at Five Five the era, looking back at how the genre was represented on television at the turn of the century. It feels very forward thinking. It feels very modern in the sense that it really does a great job of kind of fusing personality and occasionally comedy and taking robot, like having romance and having these elements that are important, I think, to a well rounded story that some sci fi was having a little trouble finding that balance. Uh, why do you think, as a creative, why do you think it's important to have a show like Frostgate? 
do all those things? Why was it important to not just do another attempt at a Star Trek? Why was it important to not just, you know, do another sci-fi story and instead infuse it with all those kind of elements? Yeah, I think the operative word of what you just said was another, right? So, you know, it would be just another one of those other shows. Uh, at the time, I look, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, right? Original series and, and, and next gen. But at the time, I, I, I referred to the series Farscape as kind of the anti-Star Trek. And I didn't mean that in a negative sense. I just meant it in the sense that there was already Star Trek in the next generation and some other shows that had um, ships, obviously, you know, predicated on 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 um, on a military background, right? Or military, you know, um, uh, uh, hierarchy on board the ship. And I wanted the exact opposite. I wanted it to, to be as as, um, as as filled with anarchy and and fractiousness as possible. Um, uh, so um, that's kind of what you know, kind of was 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 my my watchword um, kind of going into this. I love that. And then look, I also the idea of I, I, I call it tennis ball special effects now with so much of fantasy genre, sci-fi genre, so, you know, genre is utilizing CGI, so it's it's these performers having to act against tennis ball. Whereas Farscape, the, the, honestly, the head of the company, was so able to infuse the show with practical effects, with practical designs, with practical makeup and costumes and everything. With kind of looking back at 25 years of it, what would you say was your favorite key, single piece of Oh my God! I can't believe we made this. <laughs> what is there any particular special effect or any particular thing that appeared on the show that you still look back and like? Oh, ah. <laughs> that's a, okay. It's a, it's a great, great question. It's um, yeah. There's so many things, and what was great was early on we would um, the writers would kind of describe the care, you know, what the the alien would be and and that sort of thing. And um and then um uh our creature designers, Dave Elsie and company, would just they would come up with something that was it was it worked for the story, but it was something that was that we couldn't have conceived ourselves. And it kind of taught me to just let if you've got artisans uh in any department, right? Uh, and that could be the obviously the the, the um, animatronic creatures, but even makeup, uh, you know, or or cinematography, anything, any any of the artisans. Tell them what you need um, that's story specific, but don't try to impose uh, any sort of you know anything beyond that because that's their entire world. Their world is is the is those is that is the, is the, those arenas, and so let them, uh, you know, you'll get something back. It's wildly different than what you ever expected. So I'd say <clears throat> that's what I kind of discovered, um, you know, early on in the series. Uh, probably, I, you know, there's so many, you know, characters that we that we did that I thought that I thought were absolutely fascinating. Um, but you know, I would have to uh, an obvious choice would be the guy sitting behind me here, Rigel, um, simply because um, uh, he was as small as we could get. A, a a puppet or or animatronic character, and be operated by two or three different people, and still have them be performative. So I wanted them as small as possible, and then um, uh, it just to imbue him uh, with so much personality that even though he was a puppet and we're we're on a TV schedule, right? So it, you know you don't have all the time. You can't you don't have the opportunity for reshoots and all the sorts of things that that other you know that you might use having a feature film just imbue him with so much personality that people will just forget that he's a puppet because they're watching him and the, you know, and the, and the stuff that's coming out of his mouth and his attitude toward people. Um, and, um, and I think that served us incredibly well on two fronts. One, I, I'd like to think that we were successful in that regard in terms of people really did um, like kind of lose themselves in, in Rigel as a character. Um, but it also just, pushed us to to make sure that he you know that personality his personality was um as you know kind of extreme and out there and 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 uh, hopefully entertaining as absolutely possible and then you kind of let that that whole idea kind of then um you know apply to pilot you know and and really any other any other any other kind of you know um non-human not a person in a suit uh um you know characters that, that we had I also think that is all my time. 
Rob, thank you so much for taking the dog and speaking to me today. Honestly, my pleasure. Uh, I you've made my father's week by me getting to talk to you. Just like I, <laughs> like I guess he's, <laughs> he's, he's probably freaking out on the East Coast about this at the moment. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome.